Good evening and welcome to my humble Moderawi Bedstead Junction. Uh, tonight we're having a quick look at uh, some um, split chassis locomotives. In fact, every single locomotive that's on my layout uh, tonight has uh, um, it's got the split chassis construction. I'm just going to move this uh, box off the uh, layout just a second and have a little talk about what we what we've got actually got here. Now, in the foreground, in green, in BR green, is Lydham Manor. A mainline Lydham Manor. Um, now Lydham Manor uh, is a special locomotive for me because it's preserved on the uh, Painting and Dartmouth Steam Railway. And uh, I've had very many happy trips on the Painting and Dartmouth Steam Railway. Uh, in fact, you uh, take a train from Painton to Kingswear, and then you go. You can go by ferry in, into into Dartmouth. Highly recommended if you happen to be in the in the local area. Now the Manor class of locomotives were designed by Charles Benjamin Collett and uh, they, they were designed in 1938 and they were a part of a policy to replace existing 260 locomotives and 440 locomotives with a range of 460s capable of mixed traffic use. Now I'm assuming the 440s which were to be replaced was the uh, county class well, I think the county class were, were, had already been uh, all gone by about 1933 anyway. So uh, there might have been other 440s remaining on the uh, on the, the Great Western Railway, like the, perhaps the uh, Duke Dogs, I think they were called, weren't they? Yeah, I think they were. Anyway, but um, the two six O's were moguls, and they were designed by George Jackson Churchward. And in fact, the one that you can see just beyond the uh, Lydon Manor is... Uh, a mogul class. Now I've got to watch I don't get my manners and moguls mixed up while I'm talking uh, tonight. Okay, obviously in the foreground it's a manor and in the background it's a mogul. Uh, the mogul is in BR black, in early BR livery, and in fact it was the uh, World War Two that actually stopped the uh, the construction of a lot of these locomotives and the scrapping of um, the two six O's. So they went on to survive the they, they went on to survive the war. Um, certainly, it was planned that the uh, the Grange class was going to be more, far more numerous. Uh, in fact, the um, the Manor classes were limited to uh, limited to thirty locomotives. And according to the information I've got here, which would have been correct as of around about night in the nineteen eighties when this was uh, mainly railways made this particular locomotive. There are six, six as of 1984, uh, preserved, with four currently in service, and, and one of those, of course, is Lydon Manor, which is on the now on the uh, Painted the Dartmouth Steam Railway. Now behind it, it's quite an interesting uh, little train, really. We'll move along there now. And we'll have a look at the carriages. Now these carriages are also made by Main Line. or replica railways. As a matter of fact, that if the um, the coaches, like for like, if they come in either a replica railways or a um, mainline box, really when you look at them, they're identical to each other. And I'll just quickly show you. I mean, not many people like to show boxes and things, what, what things come in, but I, I'm going to make an exception for tonight. And we're going to do this. I think it could be of interest. Here we are, that's the mainline box, okay. Collet 60 foot first second brake coach in BR Maroon. There we are. And in fact, the, the uh, mainline uh, vehicle is in fact the... Uh, the brake, uh, the brake uh, coach you can see right at the back of the train, and then the first two coaches uh, are produced by Replica Railways. Replica Railways. There we go. So you can see that in there. Now I think there was a little bit of a. A confusion as to who had held the rights to, to uh, 
a lot of the, the old tuning from Mainline and in fact Dapple thought they had it well in fact Replica Railways did and, it, and uh, in fact this and the, and I think I ended up going to court or something if I remember rightly and uh, but Re Replica Railways I put an acknowledge thing in uh, in the box of the same Replica Railways acknowledge the assistance of Dapple Modern Railways in facilitating production of this model so that's what the little slip of paper says in there So that, that's that's focusing a little bit on the actual uh, train itself, the rolling stock, which we've got behind it. And then we're going on to the locomotive uh, that we can see in front of us right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom out slightly. I'm going to have a look at this locomotive in action. Now, there's a possibility it may stall on the points. Uh, there's a little bit of um, a problem with the contacts on, on the, the pair of middle wheels I've, I've seemed to have identified. And what I do is I'll be taking it apart just to clean up, clean up the chassis and the axles. But that's uh, that's a, another job for another day. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this train into reverse. And we'll see if we can bring her out onto the, onto the tracks. I'm going to stop her with the signal up there. Sorry about my poor camera work now. I'm, uh, I've got a brand new, this is a brand new camera we're using tonight. And we'll talk about the camera as well while we're, uh, while we're doing this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the points so that we can go around uh, the main line with this particular locomotive. Right, let's put her into forward gear. As you see there, it hesitated slightly on that point there. And I have identified that as being in the middle set of wheels. So as soon as they hit, hit the dead spot, uh, there's problems. I think the rear ones have got traction tires on as well as rightly. But we'll give everything a good clean up anyway and we'll get that sorted out. Now, I bought this during the lockdown. In fact, it was one of the first locomotives I bought during the lockdown. I, uh, I say, because of my fond memories of the uh, painting of Darkwood Steam Railway, I, I particularly wanted this uh, locomotive. Now, I don't think there are any in production at the moment uh, that you can actually buy new. So going down the second hand route on that famous auction site was how I, the, the way that I was... Uh, having a go. Now you notice it is a little bit noisier than what you'd expect a, a modern offering to be. But uh, I know it almost, it almost sounds like you're chuffing, doesn't it? Well it does, it does to me anyway. But quite a good not about that performer really. I mean it, uh, once I got the points issue sorted out so it goes, goes over points you can hear it you can hear it sort of, sort of hesitate on the point there, sort of cut out for a second. You can see that just the uh, the forward motion of the locomotive is throwing it, is carrying it over the point. So I'll get that sorted out. What a lovely locomotive. And I'll bring you in to have a closer look at her in a moment. We'll get her over the point now, and we'll bring, we'll bring her in. There we are, so this is a uh, Lidham Manor. Lovely looking locomotive. No, I, I like the livery on it, nice, nice colour to it. There we are, now we're in focus. Now, so it, do, it does jump into focus a little bit better now, this particular new camera. Uh, now I was using a Canon M10 uh, mirrorless camera and, I, and now I'm using the uh, Canon M50 mirrorless camera which I've only just received today so it's all new to me. I've been reading the instruction booklets and uh, going throughout its operation and everything else. So 
we're going to be using this tonight and obviously we'll, we'll see how we can we get on with it okay so let's give her another um run around the track and we'll come out I'm going to zoom out so just slightly. I think that's about the best. That's a nice little angle there for zoom out to. There we are. Okay, we can follow her around. I think I can look at this tripod up a little bit too tight. Let's see if we can... Uh, no, no, now we can follow the locomotive around. And as you can see, the coaches which are behind this particular lo locomotive are the, 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 the correct Western region ones. They, they did come out in Maroon as well. So I, I think um, after nationalisation, they tried, um, first of all, what they call a blood and custard or Carmony Queen livery. And then they came out with uh, Maroon as being the colour after that. And uh, you ended up, I mean, if you have a look at many pictures of um, locomotives running in the 1950s, you'll see that they're um, running with a, a with a mixture of coaches with, with different liveries. So the trains all look a bit mixed up, really. But really, it was after the war, really, and the, the country was recovering uh, from the war. And uh, a, a lot of things with BR, obviously BR was trying to uh, establish its identity and um, the Great Western Railway will become the Western Region of British Rail. Now we're going to stop our mobile in the station, the far station over here. More or less of the rear coach is in there. So will all passengers in the rear coach please get out onto the platform now. Okay, you can look at my uh, little band of sailors there. And we'll have a look at the mobile now. Now that the uh, manor class is... Uh, not there on the station as you can see that's in br black with the early crest and you can clearly see it's a 260 uh, lo locomotive there with the uh, very very handsome looking little locomotive in fact the moguls do have some advantages there there are there is a, a, a dapple version of the mogul available now and um ad pudding's got one if you look up his uh his uh, particular uh youtube channel He's showing one and also there's one uh, shown on Sam's Trains as well. Um, Sam's Trains is uh, the place to go really for an in-depth uh, review of, of locomotives. You'll go right into it. Whereas, um, sort of, I, I'm the sort of, you know, I, I won't probably give it that great a depth uh, of, of detail when I'm looking at locomotives. I'm uh, looking at operation everything else and uh, in a way how the locomotives related to the to the real thing now what we'll do is we're going to bring our little manor into the station and we'll have a little look at our mogul and watch that one go around the track as well well actually what we'll, we'll do we'll give little manor a little run round and we'll see if we can follow around just just a little bit first Now, split chassis locomotives, uh, they do get a bit of a bad press uh, because well, the, well, the only weak point they've got really is the axles. Uh, there's plastic um, plastic axles to insulate uh, one side of the locomotive from the other. That's how they're constructed. And um, those axles can uh, weaken and um, crack with age. Um, some people will, will re uh, repair it with super glue. But in fact, you, you can buy replacement axles for these. And... As far as I'm aware, for the for the Batman ones, you can see that one's actually agitated on the point there as well. So that's something I will have to give some urgent attention to. Uh, but I've had many many uh, happy hours with this one since the lock joint uh, since enjoying the lockdown. Right, so we'll bring her around then, and we'll bring her into the station. Right, so here we go.
quick change of points. Now, as, as I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, this particular uh, layout we've got here doesn't stay out on a permanent basis. In fact, it goes away every night and I take all the track apart. So I've got to, you know, it's pretty high maintenance. I need to replace any sort of loose fish plates and stuff like that. Uh, it is really, in the moment, it's the only way I can do this in a practical way. So I'm pleased that I can actually do this. And as you can see, if you've not seen this railway before, it's on the bed. You can see the headboard down there quite clearly now. Okay, so in, in we come. There we are, that's not too bad. I need to practice my planning a little bit better. I could have followed it, followed the loco in all the way. But obviously I'm trying to operate the controller and operate the tripod at the same time. So, uh, there we are. I, don't, I think we're actually getting quite safely there. Now we're going to change the points now. And then we're going to run the, uh, the Black Mogul for a little while. Now... Before we uh, do that, we'll have a look at the, the boxes which these came in, and uh, we'll have a bit of a box uh, box night tonight. Three seven zero nine one B L M mogul, black mogul basically. There are and mainline railways. Now bear in mind. These locomotives would have been made at the very latest in 1984, the early 19, so the early 1980s, and that's when mainline um, starts being produced as, as a mainline brand. In fact, it was the parent company of Palatoy, which you can see there, Palatoy. They decided to move away from the model railway business and concentrate on um, what they what they thought was more lucrative areas. Now, again. We're looking at our lovely Linda Manners box. Manor class 460 in BR Green livery. Catalogue number 37043. Mainline Railways. Right, so let's have a look and see if we can reverse our uh, mogul out of the station. This one actually does uh, run quite well. well. I'll explain something about this one in a, in a while. I can see this one doesn't hesitate over the point, so I managed to get the uh, to get that particular aspect of it corrected. So let's have a look and see now. There we are, we can just focus in up on the signal box up there now, so we can see that a little bit better. And another change of points. Sorry, I just kicked the tripod. Uh, we're working in a very, very confined space, so I'm guessing I, I will be thinking of some way of actually uh, electrifying these points so, uh, obviously at the moment I've got three separate baseboards that are not fixed together everything comes apart the baseboards come up everything comes up off the bed so I can go to bed at night so uh, electrifying the points I think the only way I can do it is maybe to uh, run some kind of remote wiring to, uh, up to them maybe down the side of the maybe down the side of the layout the same way as it's coming from the controller there well let's, let's see if we can you know, I'll get that done at some point. I might buy the point motor and then see how I can get them uh, wired up. The same with getting up and down um, to alter these points. But let's see now. We can get the points altered, I think, for the main line. We'll soon find out. Yeah. 
and there we go. There's our main line mobile coming around the track now. Not quite as noisy as the manor. I think I've probably given these a little bit of a service because some of them I, I, I really worked on them only once uh, since I bought them after it joined the lockdown. But this one was quite cheap. Uh, it, I think it was only about 20 odd quid uh, when I bought this particular one. And uh, it was advertised as uh, running erratically. Now the only reason it was running erratically was that the um, the motor wasn't uh, properly connecting with the chassis. Um, unless you've actually seen one of these uh, uh, taken apart, you probably won't uh, realise how these are made. But they're certainly a very, very simple construction. I mean, basically, it's, it's really uh, the chassis in two halves sort of clamped together with screws and with um, plastic insulators. Uh, the wheels then go onto the, onto the bottom of the chassis and the motor um, bolts onto the top of the chassis or screw, screwed on the top of the, onto the top of the chassis and then the body is screwed on with a couple of screws and that's it. You, you can actually take one of these apart in minutes really. Now one thing I have found and it's uh, if anybody's ever the, uh, wonder what they mean by an Italian tune-up, uh, this is going to be it, okay? I think some people will be uh, having uh, their hearts and their mouths watching this go around at this speed. But sometimes with these mainline locomotives, if you run them around the track like that for, a, for a, a short while it will then run a lot more freely why that is I do not know there we are look over the points no hesitation over the points for this one really um, I, I took the motor out and inside the motor as well it was filthy and so what I've done is I've replaced the uh, the brushes and the springs on this particular one Now the 4300 class locomotive, like I say, under Charles Benjamin College, he was going to be um, cannibalizing these to build more to build manors and granges. But he was uh, it was all thwarted by the by the Second World War, and so these uh, carried on to survive into be our service. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a rev up now. There we are, the 4300 class. There you can see quite clearly. Mainline railways. Now, one thing I do need want to add to this particular one, I, I want to add a crew. There's no crew in this, and I need to get back online and buy uh, uh, some more uh, more crew. There anyway, I slowed down there, and I can't think of the point. But a lot of people say that uh, criticise these as being poor runners, but really, you're looking at a locomotive that's something like around about at least 40 years old, I would say. In fact, they do actually, when they run, given a good run, they will kind of warm up and, and really, really perform quite well, or reasonably well. Okay, so that's uh, one of my, again, lockdown purchases there. Now there was a second series of these particular locomotives. Now this is one of the first series with a small cab. I might be, might be able to see the small cab in just a moment. And we can compare it with the uh, with the Manor class. In fact the second series had a cab similar to the uh, similar to the Manor class. So there were more creature comforts added to the later series of uh, GD Roy mobiles.
the last batch of 19 reported in 1932. Yeah, it's group cabs incorporating a side window. But I'm reading this off the sheet, so there's not been some sort of clever font of knowledge here. I'm just reading from the sheet, sort of cheating a bit, but there we go. Me. Now it says here the first withdrawals were take to start to take place in 1936 and it was originally intended to replace all of the 260s with Granger Manor classes. Now we're going to have a little look at another what I'm going to do is we're going to call it a day from now on, we're going to bring these in. Obviously, please sort of um, make allowances for these locomotives because they are rather old now. And uh, I was quite lucky to get these uh, like this. I'm sure the dapper one runs much better. In fact, I watched uh, Sam's trains and um, AD Pullins trains as well. And um, it, uh, theirs run much better than these mainline ones. But... Uh, I don't really get these out all that often to be honest and uh, that's another thing as well because you know I don't run them very often, I haven't run them lately they, have got a little, they can get a little bit sort of stiffened up but there we are, it's going around nicely now ok, now I'm going to split this into two two halves this particular one uh, so I'm going to make another video in, uh, about the other uh, locomotives in a moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bid you farewell for now now if you like what you see, press like subscribe and press that bell and you'll be notified of further um, videos which I'll be making and uh, I shall bid you farewell and thank you very much and for those of you who are going to be going on to part two of this particular uh, video I'll welcome you back quite shortly okay thank you very much